I have his toast burning here. Oh, suffering, Willie. Will you put me a new plug on that toaster, Bert? Will you? Oh, we'll have to have new plugs on everything, never mind toaster. Well, if it has to be new plugs, it'll have to be. Why well, do you have to change it in the first place? I don't know. Because he wants modern ones in here, doesn't he? Yeah, well, we'll just have to put that down to the common market and all, won't we? Brian! I'm here. I'm up. And not before time. Here it is. I've got ten minutes. You are not going to work with no breakfast, Brian. Give us a piece of toast to eat it on my bike. And you would, you, you're that daft. I hope burnt offering. But you know what you can do about it, Bert? Honest. And Brian, don't brush your hair at the table. How many times have I got to tell you? It's just another way of getting more money out of you, you know. What is? Changing our plugs. Square holes is just another sales gimmick. I mean, what's wrong with round holes? Don't ask me, Bert. No, no, you know what I mean? It's no good asking anybody, is it? There's no answer to it. Brian, do you have to do that? What? Dip your toast in your tea. Well, I like it. Well, it's disgusting. Yeah, but it's nice, though, isn't it? Oh, I've tried bringing him up. Right, well, I'm off. Here, you want to keep yourself wrapped up these mornings. You're only keeping me warm, just till the mortgage is paid off. Look, we're here now, aren't we? And you're going to like it. And I'll tell you what, I'll get you an egg tomorrow, all right? Because I'll make sure you unpack egg cups. All right, love. Right, love. Go on. I hope you're keeping your eye on that clock, Brian. That's all right for some, innit? Well, I'll tell you what, you'll stop at home with me and you'll see what graft is. No, no, Ta. Hello, love. Come on in. Hello. Cheerio. Ta-ra. I won't come so close to him, Quill. It'll put you off. If put anybody off him where he dips his toast in his tea. Hi. Hi. You gonna give us a lift to yeah, work? Yeah, right. Right on, Mum. We're off. Oh, do you know I never knew I'd give birth to a flaming Martian? <laughs> hey, is that all the marmalade? Yeah, well, you can just go shopping this morning, can't you, and get yourself some more. And this place needs bottoming and all. Oh, I'm Lady of Leisure, mate. Not in this house. Where are you going with that? Back to bed. Well, it's the best place to stay warm, isn't it? It says burn the electric fire. Oh, it's all right for some. Uh, he didn't puff round then this morning. Well, does it look like he did? Oh, you must have upset him last night. Me upset him? or never. You did. You said he was all talk. Well, that was just you talking. Oh, now you can't put that one on me. He comes in here full of big ideas and you poured cold water all over him. It didn't seem like that, did it? Did it? What was he talking about, oh, anyway? Well, how do I know? He, he must have had something in the back of his head. You'll probably never know now. Likely as not, never show his face again. Ta-ra. Good job. Good morning. I might later. Are you early? Been here ten minutes. Hey, well, you're ready to get cracking then. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I am here. I've uh, not been sleeping very well at night. You know why that is? Because you kept a lot during the day. Hey, now that's not fair. I've been grafting, haven't I? Ah, oh, well, that's what it is. It's bad for your system. No, nah, it's not that. It's Monkey's car. Oh, huh? Well, he won't buy himself any antifreeze, you see. What's that got to do with it? Well, he's got this thing goes under the engine, you know, and he puts a night light in it, like. And then he uh, sticks a couple of blankets on the top. And I end up waking up in the middle of the night with the overcoat falling on the floor again. What a pathetic little picture. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Why don't you buy yourself a couple of blankets, then? Well, it'd have to be cheaper to buy him his antifreeze. Well, why don't you buy him some? Why should I buy him his antifreeze? Look, before I go as daft as you, mate, let's get the van loaded up and get round to Gurry Baldy Street, eh? It's just the third roof, isn't it? Yeah, Mrs. Fox. Right, we call it half a day. Half a day on that roof, it'll be me that needs the antifreeze. So, your missus still on this uh, singing caper, is she? Yeah, you know what it's like, keeps her quiet. Have a funny way of singing then. Yeah, daft, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Hey, listen, if you give us a sub, we can go over there and give it a big hand. You're joking. It's cost me enough, that singing career of hers. Come on, it's nice money, isn't it? Oh, aye, yeah. Keeps it in these fancy showbiz hairdos, you know. Gives it glamorous ideas. Barely keeps her happy. Do anything to keep her happy, wouldn't you? Yeah, but don't tell her that, will you? <laughs> right, apart from the cat, he's at the lot now. Yeah, and I'm all set, boss. Eat up your piece of cake. 
Oh, I do feel sorry for you. Up there in this weather. Oh, don't worry, missus. The sheriff will be here in a minute. <laughs> oh, cheerful little fella, isn't he? Nice to see you happy in your work. Would you like a cup of tea? Warm you up before you start. Yeah, well, uh, that'll be very nice, love. Very nice, ta. Right, then. I've got everything I need now. Yeah. Not for me, thanks, love. I've got to be off, you know. People ought to be warned against you. Me fatal charm. <laughs> You look like something out of the lady killers, Ron. Just my old suit, so. What's it all in aid of? Um, little bit of business. Well, you can't be going to a wedding, you've not got a buttonhole. And you can't be going to a funeral. Well, not with that anchor, you can't. If she says she'd be long, I thought I'd just might catch her, you know? You know, what time she takes a dinner, she'll be 20 minutes yet. Y you don't mind if I, uh... Oh, feel free, you know, you told me, yeah? Do you want a cup of coffee? Uh, no, 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 thanks. Well, sit down, then. Um, no, no, it's all right. You're not even going to sit down? Well, to tell you the truth, I might be a little bit uncomfortable as to suit. I must have put on a bit of weight. Well, come on, what's it all about? Tell us. Well, you'll find out in due course, if you're still interested. You're going for a job or something? Or something. Is that what you were on about last night? Well, no, I don't think I'll tell you. You didn't put much faith in me last night, did you? I didn't know what you were talking about. I still don't. I just thought I might see her before. Still, probably just as well that I don't. Look, um, tell her I called and that I'll call again before I go on, all right? Ron? Yeah, yeah. Do you mind if I give you a bit of advice? Sure, go ahead. It's the hanky. It's a bit much, don't you think? You think? It makes into a bit of a dog's dinner, you know. Yeah. See you. Ta no chance, Stanley. No flipping chance. I beg to differ. I beg to the banker. Look, it's either Belltown Warrior or Fair Domingo. I don't fancy either of them on this going. I've given you my advice. And your advice is good. That's why you're a rich man, is it? Well, I didn't exactly see you dropping your holes now, Stan, did I? Uh, no. Is Mrs. Walker in the back, Fred? No, she's away. She won't be back till this afternoon. Ah, uh, I'll be busy then. Well, can I take a message? Uh, no, it's just that she wants me to do some tiling or something in the kitchen. Well, nick through the back and have a look if you like. No, not if she's not there, no. I don't exactly know what she wants. It must be a rough and ready job, otherwise she'd ask somebody who employs craftsmen. I beg your pardon, Stanley. Take no notice of him, Len. Somebody scoffed his porridge this morning. My porridge has been poached. As a matter of fact, he's turning out to be a very handy lad. He's picking it up, you know. Yeah, Give us a quick deal, will you? Aye, aye. Just beat the rush. Two gins, one tonic when you're ready, Craig. <coughs> one tonic? I wonder how Ivy's going on. Do you know how much she's up go. to there? Oh, well, she's lucky in one thing, kid. There's not a lot wants to in that house. Even so, moving, it's a terrible strain. Do you know we had moved from the house we got wedded? Oh, we moved once. It was that compulsory purchase thing, you know. There's a fire station there now where we used to live. Even so, you'd like to move sometimes, wouldn't you? Because I'll tell you what, it's going down round our way. You just can't imagine uprooting somehow, can you? Well, she's not moved, spitting distance. Anyway, I think it was how she wanted more than all. Oh, of course. It's very contemporary, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll get a couple of pies and we'll go down calling on her, eh? Do you think she'll mind? No, she likes showing people round. There you go, one tonic. Hey, and a couple of pies, look, to take out. Take out. Oh. You must be joking. Oh, go on, you know you fancy her. No, but she doesn't fancy me, though, does she? Oh, well, then just take an interest, that's all I'm saying. <sighs> no, I haven't got the brass. <laughs> I haven't got the big jag. And from what I hear, uh, I'm about 30 years too young. Ah. And that's one thing you have got, youth. And it's an asset she might just begin to appreciate from what I hear. So go on, ask her out. She's very down, you know. No, I'm sorry, Elsie. I don't think even computer dating could get me and Susie together. All right, then ask me out. You're on. Chicken monkey, come on, buy us a drink. I will. Fred? Good for Elsie. Yeah, boss. All side up. Ah, you cracked it, did you? No danger. Don't worry, it's all there. Eh? I haven't even had a pint out of it. It'd be your last if you did. Hey, where do you leave the gear? Well, if he's down there. She was very good about that. I thought we'd have a shifty down the road, see if any more need you doing, you know. What are you doing, shifting the slates with your boot? Come on, get us a pint. Fred, give me a pint Oh, it's you two. Come on in. <laughs> Hey, uh, we'll just start with call and see how you're getting on. 
I don't mind, do you? No, love, I just got my feet up for a minute. Do you know, you have no idea work in unwrapping things and then trying to find home for them, you know? Oh, I can well imagine. Still again, on, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Is it nice to have your little knickknacks round you? We brought some hot pies. Vera, I call that an inspiration, kid. You don't mind using your plates, do you? No, love. Come on, you're welcome. Go on in. Tell you what, you could put kettle on for a minute again, will you, love? Ah, do give us a wit table, will you, look? Oh, I bet you're going to be ever so happy here. It's got a feel to it. I know I will look. I love it. That's because you've got a modern outlook. And you're Bert. Does he like it and all? Well, you know our Bert, kid. It'll start to show itself one way or another in about three years' time. <laughs> hey, we should have put these plates to warm, you know. But it doesn't matter, does it? Oh. One of you two are hungry, then? Well, we thought you'd have had something. Well, I like that, Vera. Take it. We never thought. Well, you can start to think on your way back to Rovers, can't you, for yours? I dare say she's not run out. And while you're going, you can think as about how you would never be so mean as to take your friend Ivy nothing for a dinner when she's been working hard all morning. Honestly, Vera, I'm very touched. I've made a list of some of the stuff you can get, mate. Get down there after they've had their dinner, eh? Right, boss. And when you've done that, get over to George Hargreaves, will you? He's got some scaffolding for us. It's your go, innit? Eh, uh, I presume I can take the van. I mean, I don't have to carry the stuff in my pocket. I go easy with it, will you, mate? That needs tender loving care of that van. Now, look, there's the list. Uh, tell him I don't want any gash and don't be all afternoon. Right, boss. Hi, hi. Eh, uh, the boss is in there if you want him. Easy. Here's Chum. Chum, is it? There's something I can do for you. Well, he fits the description I was given of him anyway. Who does? That fella. He was described to me as a big, fat scouse. So? So what was he doing messing about on my roof? Well, if I knew who you were, I could tell you, wouldn't I? Who am I? I'm Mr Fox. That's who I am. And you're not happy with the job? 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 Oh, oh, oh that's a laugh. Aye, that's a laugh, that is. What job? He finished it off this morning, didn't he? Your wife paid him. I know, right? Well, she paid him. But what I don't know is what she paid him for. What exactly is your complaint? You're a load of con artists. That's Just my watch complaint. what you say, mate. And I will stand up in court and say it if I have to. There was nothing wrong with that roof, nout. I was up there day before yesterday fixing television aerial and it was flaming perfect. I remember admiring it. So somebody's conning somebody, aren't they? I'll have the money back. Now, I can't. I'll long on for now, the money back. And I'll remind you that I have got your ladders and tools. Do you follow me? Eggie! Eggie! <laughs> Leave this stuff on the van. What do you want it off? Keys. What's up? I had a fella in here a couple of minutes ago. Did you see him on the way out? Oh, that fella, yeah. The name of Fox. That ring a bell. Got a baldy sleet. He wondered what you were doing on his roof. There's nothing wrong with his roof. It's perfect. That's what he said himself. Ah, they are. What's he going on about, then? He was up there a couple of days ago. He said there was nothing wrong with it. Hey, now, hang on. There were two or three slates gone. What do you do? Tap him with the hammer? Kick him with your boot? Oh, look! There was that much batten rotten. I put new batten in and everything. I was beginning to think. Myself. Three on the flaming trot. Oh. Look, I showed his missus, didn't I? He was up there two days ago. He said there was nothing wrong with him. Well, how would he know? What is he? Some sort of expert or something? you just picked the wrong flaming fellow this time, haven't you? I mean, he's only a clerk, I know that. Well, they are. He's a clerk. Only a clerk in the Borough Surveyor's office, isn't he? He knows enough to know what he's talking about. Well, he's talking through his wellies, down. Don't start that with me. Get off the job. Oh, hey, boss, I don't think you're being very fair, dear. I built this firm up on goodwill. 
You've just cost me a cartload of that. Look, I've been grafting, haven't I? It's not good enough for me. It's 30 or 40 quid to you. I had to pay him back, didn't I? Well, I was daft, that was. He's got the flaming ladders and everything else. You've landed me right in it this time, haven't you? Just as I was beginning to give it a go. You believe him, don't you? You don't believe me. It's the same old story, isn't it? You're not the easiest fellow to believe. Look, you can't have it both ways. You can't say I'm conning people and then tell me that people don't believe what I'm talking about. I mean, I showed his missus, didn't I? I took her over the road and showed her the slates. There was three in the gutter and two hanging askew. Nah, it's no good arguing the toss. Well, I'd have argued the toss if I'd have been here. Well, you weren't here, were you? Yeah, and you weren't up on that roof, no. But he was. He says he was. He's conned you. He's the one that's going round conning people. He's playing on the fact that he works for the Butter Surveyor's office. He knows you've got to keep him with them inspectors and that. He's conned you. He's just got the job done for flaming nothing. What was up with those slates? How do you mean? What was wrong with them? Well, I don't know. They were all like grey powdery down the edges, you know, where the nail is. You could do that with them. I don't know what makes them go like that, but that's the way they wear. Well, yeah, the water lodges under the slates. And then there's the frost. Breaks them up. What the hell? We've had enough frost, haven't we? He's probably dislodged them himself, didn't realise it. They probably came down at night. Yeah, well, he gave me the right answer about the slates. It's just about a toss-up, isn't it? Just. All right, go and get the flaming ladders. Oh, and give us a pack of them rollers, will you? Uh, yes, the wire ones are the plastic. Plastic. I may as well do myself up even to watch the television. Why don't you come down to it, Gatsby? Well, you can give it a miss for a bit, I think. Mm. Don't blame you. Wouldn't go myself unless they paid me. Mind you, it's just as well that they do. Yeah, sure, you frock. Oh, oh honestly, it's lovely. Em, it'd suit you. You're the same colouring as me. Yes, it will. Oh, oh. oh it's a knock, Annie. What do you think? Oh, give it here. Hey, watch it. I need that for tonight. Oh, isn't it lovely? Mm. Doesn't it fall well? Yeah. I bet that cost you a few bucks. Mm. Well, tell her. Go on, tell her. 45 quid. Oh, it's nice, though. Hey, do you think it'd suit me? It'd look great on you. And if it looks as nice on me as it does on you, I shall be very happy. I shall follow you all the way to dress agency. <laughs> hey, what do you think, then? Very nice, that. Oh, talk about wild enthusiasm. Well, look at it, will you? Yeah, very becoming, very nice. Very nice? It should be very nice for 45 quid. 45 quid? Mm, looks every penny of it, though, doesn't it? God, blimey, why didn't you just sew five pound notes together? How can you afford that on the door? I wish I could. It's not mine. It's... 45 quid. My money. That's marvellous, isn't it? That's all I need. It's my money. I work for a building firm that gives money away and you're chucking it round like yesterday's echo. It's my money and I work for it myself. Every penny of oh, it. Oh, look, I'm sorry I'll tell you what I'll do then. You look after your money if you're capable and I'll look after mine and we'll see how we go on, eh? You're late, Chuck. Hey, you'll never guess. What? I only went to wrong house, didn't I? You never did. I did. I was just turning the corner of our street before I realised. The street that was, you know what I mean? You're daft. Hey, I've got something for you here. Oh, that's nice. Where is it? A thermometer. There in the middle, look. It's supposed to be the wheel of a ship line. Oh, can you see that, girl? Very nice. I thought it might look nice on the mantelpiece, you know. Uh, something for the new house, like. Oh, you little love, and you've been out and bought it specially for me? Well, uh, I didn't exactly buy it, no. Uh, one of the apprentices made it, but I give him a couple of bob for it, like. What, apprentices? Yeah, the firm don't mind. You see, all the apprentices have to do a job like that to get the hang of that indexing head. That's what the spokes go in, you see. Yeah. Are you any wiser? Not a lot. <laughs> it's very nice, love. Thanks, though. Aye. Hey, up. They've got your skivvy in again, have they? Well, uh, Ivy's taken me on as the new housemaid, haven't you? <laughs> well, we are going bosh. I'll tell you what, I don't know why you just don't get wed, you and our Brian. Then you'd have job security, wouldn't you? What's up? So, if you hear screaming from next door like someone being murdered with a hammer, it's someone being murdered with a hammer. Aye, well, it's now you under the sun. Which was murdering which? Him murdering her. Oh. Any special reason? Yeah, she spent 45 quid in a frock. Oh, I've known him go berserk for less provocation. It's a nice frock, though, for a stage appearances, you know. Yeah, I don't suppose it was the dress or the 45 quid that upset him. I suppose it was flitting to the nightclub every night that really got him riled. 
Oh, and you know you were riling wrong last night. Well, I didn't tell you you came round here today. Did he? Mm. Dinner time. I would have told you, but he didn't come back. Well, he was only at the Rovers. Well, he didn't stop long. Hey, he was all dressed up, though. Well, I see. Mm. Suit and everything. Snazzy tie, anky in his pocket. But I told him to get rid of that. Made it look like something out of Burton's window. Well, what was all that in here, Doc? He didn't say, but I think he was going for a job or something. Oh. You don't think he's really giving up the cabs, do you? He didn't say, but I think it was something like that. Ah, yes. Well, our run's a dark horse, isn't it? Oh, that, that'll be him, then. Nice to know he's not gone off me permanently. Oh, I ain't gone, I ain't gone. I'm not decent. Oh, get off. We've seen you before. Uh, oh, suits you. Excuse me. <laughs> Would you uh, like to stay for a bite? We've got a spare place. Scales out. Wouldn't mind. I uh, heard you called round. Hmm? Yes, looking like the Northern Regional finalists. All got up like a dog's dinner. I said last night, didn't I? No. I said I had plans. You didn't say what? You know what to say about chickens. I mean, come into the kitchen and tell me. <laughs> Well, I have applied for a position. Oh, yeah? You see, I got to the stage in life and I thought to myself, what you need, boy, is a little more comfort, a little style, two things you never get on the cabs. Oh, well, tell me where you're looking, because the two things I've always wanted are comfort and style and I've never found them. And then I thought the first thing you need is money. Now, where am I ever going to get any money? Answer, short of winning the pools, no chance. So you've got to find those who've got the money. And so? You move in with them. Oh, just like that? Right. Fine house, own grounds, beautiful part of the country. It's way down south. There's a big change from here, Elsie. It's near the sea. Sixty quid in my pocket after deductions and the use of a jag one day a week. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about being a chauffeur. A chauffeur? That's a nice number. Well, I'll be blowed who for. Look, I've fallen on my feet, Elsie, this time. This man, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a Rolls, he's got a jag, he's got a Range Rover, and that's not counting his wife's cars yet. Oh, where did you find him? Oh, he's a... He's a fellow who, who, who made his money up here. Now, he lives down there, but he likes to come back up here occasionally. And he likes somebody who knows Manchester really well. Oh. And you've uh, got the job? I have. I saw him in the Midland today. You'll do for me, Laz, he says. Oh. Well, good for you. Hey, uh, will you have to wear a uniform? <laughs> yes, big calf the works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Ron, I'd love to see you in that, won't I? Hey, I hope you will and all. You see, Elsie, um, there was something I wanted to talk to you about. What they really need... Well, well, they've got a housekeeper now, but she goes along with the chauffeur uh, because they're married, the two of them, uh, to each other, like, and, and uh, that's usual in that business, and it works out best that way as a rule. And I was thinking, do you fancy it? Ron, I, I think I'm hearing you right, but I'm understanding you right. I think you are. Elsie, you just say yes, and we are set up. We really are. Corey's back at 6.30 tomorrow on Plus. And don't forget the Saturday special, Charting the Dilemmas of Deirdre. That starts at 3. Starting next, it's Blind Date.